This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and welcome to another performance review on pretty much what a lot of people are calling the shoe of the year. Don't know if I can agree with it, but this is the creme de la creme, best athlete, best performance brand for basketball, and their highest tier performer, and that's the Jordan 36. All right, so I know there's a lot of other reviews out there and I appreciate you guys watching this one. If you're subscribed to the channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, uh, consider subscribing afterwards if you think this has helped you. Now, I do wanna say that unlike most of my shoes, if I'm doing a review, I don't watch other reviewers, but I do wanna give a shout out to Shay P3 Kicks. I'll put a link in his description below. Uh, Kick Doctor, Zach. I've watched a few other, So Brothers, just because it took me a while to do a review on this shoe because it's so polarizing. It has some, like, the best stats and performance you can have in one area, and then it's conceivably god awful in others. So, with that all being said, I'm gonna break it down for you and hopefully help you guys out and see if this is worth your hard earned money. So, let's jump right in the fit. All right, so coming from someone with a wide foot, I did want to go over because a lot of people try to guess if you don't have a wide foot, how it's going to fit. And with all due respect to all the reviewers out there, you don't know. If you don't have a wide foot, there's not much you can say. Just like if I don't have a narrow foot or a, wide, a thin heel or something like that, I can't tell you. I can guess. But coming from someone with a wide midfoot and a mid to high instep here a wide foot in the midfoot and not too big of a, a toe box i can give you an idea on how it's going to fit i also used to have a flat foot but i've worked on that so how does this fit how does it line up first it does run a little bit long everyone has agreed to that which is why a lot of folks with narrow foot said hey it's not going to work for you wide footers because it does run a tad narrow and it's a little bit long i was able to do a 12 and a half and normally I am a 12 wide. So for most shoes in basketball, they don't make a wide. I do a 12 and a half and sometimes 13 depending on the shoe. I was able to do a 12 and a half in this. And although I do have a little bit extra finger width there, I pretty much have a finger width from the toe, which is what you're supposed to have. You wanna have room so your, your toes can splay. So having a little bit extra space, uh, I know other viewers said maybe there's too much space if you go up half a size. I had great lockdown. My heel was pulled back into the shoe. Fit was not an issue as far as length. Toe box is decent. If you have a wide toe box, you definitely have to go up that half size. Now it comes to the midfoot. Because of this plastic shank here, and because how rigid these can be on both sides, that half size allowed me to wear it good enough. It's something where maybe I'm thinking, should I get a 13, but you can't really go up even more because it's already running long. I did have one of my friends who is a true 13 with a wide foot, and I did find out from him, this is true, although this has a traditional tongue, this system here, right here is with this materials does not allow for a very girthy foot he had a kind of a thick foot here and he just had if you kind of have a i don't want to call it chubby but that's called your girth if you have a wider foot on top of your foot this just didn't work for him now lengthwise was okay even though he was a size 13 in this 12 and a half but because of that high instep and that high girth it just doesn't work. So if you are dealing with a higher than normal instep, you can get your foot in here. I have a higher instep over here and it's just uncomfortable to get on, but it works. But if you have a girthy foot or if you have a taller forefoot, this does run kind of shallow, similar to what we had here on the KD 12 and KD 13. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the fit. The materials here though, I will tell you, if you try this on in store, which again is hard to do, maybe that's why you're watching the video, there's no break-in. Like how this fits is how it fits. When you put it on, 
the same struggles you're going to have to put it on if you have a high instep is how it's going to be no matter how long you use it the same flexibility it's not going to get more flexible this shoe has an awesome fit and feel to it and i think a majority of people are going to like the fit on it which goes a long way to enjoying a shoe if you have a wide foot go up that half size and i think you'll be okay i think i was uh again i have a wider midfoot if you have a wide toe box this part here is literally just foam so this does move on both sides so you have that flexibility where wide footers go up half size be confident but if you have a high instep of a girthy foot this is one you may have to avoid all right working our way down to support uh, support i always break down in three things you guys can say it with me put it in the comments below one do you have a flat stable base no this actually has and i don't know if you could see the cut out there of the zoom air here a very unstable base this rocks back and forth it is not great two does the shoe pull you back into the heel cup are you locked into the footbed yes excellent this material holds you in almost painfully so on certain moves but it does the job lastly do you have lateral containment and that's a combination of having an outrigger which this does not as well as having the materials and the lateral support to keep you contained which this really kind of doesn't on some of my moves i actually feel my foot bursting through where you almost see that give from the materials here and it it's near painful if not just really annoying um this shoe has bad support i don't care what any of you players who enjoy the shoe say that being said this is the absolute best poor supportive shoe i've ever played in can i say that even though it has bad support i enjoyed playing with it and you work around it you have to have a more stable base from your core you have to be more balanced you can't just trust the shoe to bail you out you have to be a little more deliberate with your moves and your jabs where you're always on center i remember watching steve nash kind of talking about when he moved the ball and no matter how he jabbed or moved he was stable so even if he had a, a big foot extended out where he's trying to make that hard jab he would stop and you could still push him back and forth he was still centered and balanced this forces you to do that now the crazy thing is that can make you a better basketball player right you learn the balance you learn you know how to work within the limitations of the shoe and it's enjoyable it's a fun shoe to play in but when you throw on something like the kd14 all of a sudden you don't have to worry about it you don't have to think about it you just play and it has a positive effect this is almost like a better training shoe and then when you get to the court throw on something like the jordan 35 where you can go harder and because you've worked on your balance and your support and your core uh, this is something that pays dividends e even in the nba i've not noticed a lot of players wearing the 36 they're wearing the 35 and, and we'll get to a few points of that the 35 has i don't know 10 times more support it's not even close it's not in the same league between the physical plastic leather lateral support wider base flat completely stable base on top of the more rigid materials obviously this is drastically heavier but the support on this shoe is it's not even the same lineup it, they just totally did a departure and the crazy thing is the 34 i thought needed a little bit more support they up the support with this version of the 34 and you can tell this is just way heavier but the 34 support was still better than this so guys i'm gonna tell you again if you have either weak ankles or you don't have a stable base you're still working on your core you don't have great balance and those are all things you can work on off court this is something that is potentially going to get you hurt it is not going to protect you uh, worst case scenario if you land on someone's foot sometimes a shoe that has a little bit higher ankle support here can keep that foot from overturning sometimes if you have a wider base you land on someone's foot the shoe can kind of catch you and roll you back or if you have a very thin cushion set up you're lower to the court 
something like I have the spawn right here. You can roll on someone's ankle and even though you're landing, because you're so close to the court, there's not much of a roll. You can recover. This does all three of those things in the opposite. You don't have much container support here. It's not that high. You have absolutely no wide base or physical ability to protect you once you roll. And this thing is so rolly and has so much cushion, feels so much higher off the court than something like that you're you're just gonna get hurt so keep that in mind there's some really great things about the shoe we'll get over it but support is just not one of them now let's jump into the cushion this is this is where this is next level this is balls to the wall uh, this has better cushion or more cushion than anything you can look at with full link zoom strobel from this guy with a double stack four foot zoom from like this guy with your uh, i think improved eclipse plate from like something like the jordan 34 and 35 back here it is incredible and then unlike even something like the gt run which is what essentially the same price ten dollars you're getting full length zoom strobel even though you don't have that react plate but you have uh, essentially that eclipse plate it feels like more zoom and it's just so much more fluid than something like this where this just feels like a heavy cheap version of this and maybe we got to do a comparison on these two because this does have your double stacked four foot zoom with like a half a zoom strobe plate in here but it also has a ton of react cushion on top of that so it, good comparison a lot of cushion on both of these but this literally feels like you're playing on one of those, I don't know if you've seen those trampoline basketball courts. Yeah, yeah, it, this is like playing on a trampoline basketball court. I don't care if you're a big guy or a little dude, if you have sore legs, a sore back, if you just need a little bit of more cushion, this is gonna make everybody feel like you got some twinkle toes. Now Jordan has done that by giving us a full length zoom strobel. They've done that also by giving us a little bit more of a rigid foam set up in the insole, which I've actually changed out the insole for one of the older ortholite insoles. But you also have a cover protecting that zoom, which I do like. I've shown that in my initial video. I actually left this in my car for Thanksgiving weekend and played in these again just this evening. And the airbags were kind of crunchy because they were, I don't want to say they're frozen, they were cold. As they broke and they felt better, but there is so much cushion. It is so fluid. Um, one thing about the Eclipse plate, uh, in the past, the Eclipse plate really had a nice forward action, almost too aggressive. They've toned that down. It's much less aggressive as that forward push off. You still have a huge spring effect, which is uh, kind of that rigidity it's providing. So if for the cushion, cushion it works incredibly well also because they minimize the eclipse plate and I forgot to say if you have a flat foot this is probably the best jordan you've been able to use since the 30 uh two the 34 or even maybe 33 but 34 35 with that eclipse plate really did not help people with flat feet uh, my apologies and with all due respect to the foot doctor the 34 and 35 with the eclipse plate pushed up on the arch and if you had a flat foot was just flat out painful it wasn't like an orthotic arch that's meant for your foot that that helped which is what he talked about with this it can be painful now this is minimized but again if you have a flat foot i almost would say you may have to stay away from this one but as far as the cushion and the eclipse plate works it feels way more balanced where you could potentially wear this off court you can wear this without sprinting on every single play where even if you're jogging it still feels good and feels more balanced and natural the heel to toe is incredible the cushion alone on this is probably worth the entrance fee it's lighter than anything even comparable as far as the lebron 18 or the gt uh run we have the gt jump and lebron 19 coming out and i guarantee you this is going to be more flexible and lighter than either one of those and it's just an awesome cushion setup but with all that said it's also what takes away from the support if you've ever tried to do a hard cut on a trampoline, everyone is probably thinking, no, why, why would I do that? I exactly. You're on a trampoline. When you're trying to play hard defense or you need that court feel, just compare this to playing on a trampoline and you're going to get all the positives and negatives that go along with that. Down to the traction, and I don't got much to say. You got firm, thick, 
rubber that actually may last a little bit outdoors, but I still wouldn't use it on court. This is way better than what we got in the 34 and 35. They did just a phenomenal job spacing it out. You know, you got full coverage. This just worked on every court I played on. This is not your level of danger. I always found that funny that you're getting on this blade traction from like the KD-14. Um, this is not as uh, sticky or as confidence just inspiring as something like the Curry 8 or Curry 9. But this is just below those and still incredibly good. This is more of your classic, really good cushioning versus your next level, like, I mean, traction, crazy traction. So traction, really enjoy this. It's not gonna let you down. The worst thing I could say about it is it's consistent. And when you do wipe, because you have spacing, you only take one or two wipes. It doesn't get stuck in there. And you'll know when you need to wipe, which is great. You'll start to slip a little bit where you feel it slightly and gradually giving. So this is an awesome traction setup. Even if you have to wipe, you know, God forbid, versus something like this where I really don't remember wiping ever. And even if you're not getting the, the, the loudest bite or squeak like you do on something like the Curry 8 or 9 where there's no squeaking on it, but the bite is crazy. It is an awesome traction setup. I think you're going to enjoy it. All right, so with all that said, I know I didn't get into the tech specs. I didn't get into the, you know, the Lenovo Weave and how it works and the other channels you can watch. Everyone who's talking about this is their shoe of the year and what it compares to. There is a lot of amazing things to like about this shoe, but I think I'll sum it up in, in this. It is an amazing cushion setup with God awful support that is incredibly fun to play in. All right, that's kind of a, a mouthful, but that does wrap it up and take with it what you will. Uh, I enjoyed playing with it. I played in it more and more and I do keep it in my bag, but if I'm actually playing competitively, so we're like, hey guys, we're, we're doing some runs here. Hey, can you, can you show up and you know, we want you to play with us. This isn't the shoe I'm wearing. This is the shoe I'm usually warming up in or maybe I'm playing after when everyone leaves and like, hey, let's get a quick game of 32 in before we head out. For that, for the games I'm playing in, and this will be a video coming out pretty soon here for the end of the year, I'm still turning to my 35s. I'm still turning to the KD14s. Um, I'm still liking the GT cuts on a clean court. This is something that does not make it for me if I'm trying to play hard, because I know that support is just not going to be helpful to me. And again, that's also coming from a player that's 245, that I'm probably quicker than most of y'all. I do not jump as high as you guys. I'm almost touching rim but i'm not a high flyer at just 510 i look like a middle linebacker but this is something that is incredible for all my old heads out there all my bigger dudes wide footers hopefully you know what that fits but if this is something you need cushion and you're at any level any age you got to check it out Guys, girls, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see next. I have a few unboxings I'm going to be doing as well as uh, end of the year videos, some top fives, top wide footers, whatever we have coming up next. But I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for your support. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see compared to, say, other reviewers have done or what other shoes you want to see it stacked up against. Guys, girls, I really appreciate you. This is Levi with Sneaker Gears, and I'll come at you later.